Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Joseph here for a late Sunday night video. Right here on the main channel, Killer of Demons 669. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to this very channel and my other channels down there. You know where they are. In the description box below. And as always, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you dare. You gotta be real, if you're not, you're just a fake bitch. Pretty much. Simple as that. But, but if you're real, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, show your love and support there. Uh, don't get to share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap and slap that motherfucking bell. Kick his ass. Show it who's boss. But turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. Because if you do, well, you're pretty much like the Buffalo Bills. You're SOL. And you know what that means. Ha! <laughs> That's it. That's it. So once again, like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment if you wish. You don't have to, but if you do, be respectful. If not, you're getting blocked. If you don't like that, tough shit. That too. And uh, follow me on social media. Share the video all over the internet. Don't forget to hit that bell. So you don't miss anything. And that's that. That's, that's all you got to do. It's so simple. Even a schmuck like you can do it. But I digress. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen. We got through the weekend. We're... About to hit the final full week of January 2024. So, that quick, huh? Yeah, pretty much. We're uh, nine days away, as of this video, nine days away from the end of the month. And then we saw it the not so, well, pretty short month of February with an extra day. Don't forget, this year is a leap year, so we have 29 days of February. Then we go right into March. And pretty soon it's Easter. Two months, pretty much two months away from Easter. Wow. Crazy, ain't it? But we got that. But hopefully everybody had a great weekend, a great Sunday. Wherever you may be, still cold as balls here in the Northeast. But gonna be a little bit, gonna get a little, not even a little bit, but gonna get a lot warmer this week. Gonna hit pretty much near 60 this week. We're gonna get some rain. Pretty much all week, except for maybe maybe tomorrow. And uh, Tuesday's going to be cloudy, and then the whole fucking rest of the week is going to rain like crazy. But it's going to be warm, so thank God it's not going to snow for a while. But I think by the time we hit the this, you know, the end of January, oh boy, it might go, might get back down to really cold weather. I, I saw it in... Uh, January, actually the last day of January, January the 31st, the morning temperature is going to, here in New York City is going to be 11 degrees. Ouch! Maybe less than that around my neck of the woods, but I'm a, I'm a little bit worried because, you know, it gets cold and hopefully my pipes don't freeze. I mean, I got my heat cranking, so hopefully they don't freeze up and I don't, I don't lose hot water when I got to take a hot shower. But... But it's supposed to warm up to like near 40 that day, so I don't have to worry that much. But just, you know, Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday night into next Wednesday night is a little bit, you gotta worry a little bit. But hopefully, you know, February comes in and that he that fucking hedgehog doesn't give us more more winter. Gives us an early spring, so we, I can talk about 60 degree weather and not, you know, bringing out the parka and the gloves and shit. I can go out in a hoodie and have fun. Well, that's coming soon, but... I'd like to get it earlier than the end of March, or early April, but we'll see what happens with that. But this weekend was a huge weekend. Speaking of huge, well, get to, get to the sports in a bit. Ron DeSantis, oh, my brother from another mother. Well, not my brother from another mother. That's you, my, my fine, sexy friend up there. But anyway... Ron DeSantis, uh, well, bye-bye, so long, farewell to your campaign. He, uh, 
He pretty much got off the campaign trail and um, packed it in. But he did endorse Donald Trump. So, pretty much now it's a two-person race in the you know, on the Republican side. And it's pretty much Donald Trump and, and um, you know, that other chick. Haley, whatever her last name is. Can you just give Donald Trump the Republican nomination now? I mean... I mean, Tuesday is the New Hampshire primary, and pretty much, pretty much it's over. I think it's over, but I mean, Haley, I think is from South Carolina, so she might win that state, but I doubt that, but this is pretty much Donald Trump is going to win the Republican nomination before the summer, but I, that was given, so... Here we go again, you know, Biden, Trump, as we get to the summer months, and pretty much as we get to August and September, and the big presidential debates come around, around late September and October, and pretty much Biden's going to just stand there looking like a douche. I don't know. What don't you know? I mean, we're getting, we're getting there, man. Nine, a little over nine months away to, oh, hopefully, you know, Hopefully, unless a catastrophe happens, like in 2020, I think we're going to get somebody new, and hopefully some change around here, but we'll see, we'll see what happens with, with all that, and a bag of chips, but yeah, Ron DeSantis is, is out of the campaign race, and he did endorse Mr. Trump. So who knows? Maybe we'll get maybe DeSantis are gonna st stick around, and maybe you know Mr. Trump is like, hey, you wanna run a run with me, Vice President? Come on, gonna be huge. DeSantis and Trump gonna be huge. We can only hope that Ron DeSantis will be the next Vice President, but I doubt that. I think he's gonna run in 2028. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And that's uh, pretty much it for that. But we got that. Uh, but big sports weekend. Oh, like yesterday, I, like I said in my my uh, SmackDown Rampage review video ago. Oh, uh, I almost died six times with that Niners game last night. Great game, great game. The, the whole division series, division games. Besides the Ravens game, besides the Ravens game, which was pretty much a blowout in the second half, every other game was very, very good and very, very close. It came down to the wire. That Niner game came down to the wire, and of course they won, so you know how happy I am. So the Niners won, the Ravens won, now they're going to find out who they're going to face. Uh, next weekend in the championship round. Well, the Niners, you know, we're waiting, waiting, waiting to see who they face. They face Detroit, the Lions, the little kittens, in from Detroit, or Tampa Bay. I mean, Tampa Bay. Pretty good game. Came down to the wire. I mean, it was thirty-one seventeen. Uh, Tampa Bay scored. They go for the two-point conversion and missed. So it was pretty much 31-22. Uh, no. Uh, not 31. Um, they were down by... Yeah, they, had, they were like... Yeah, it was 31-23, I should say. It was 31-23. to And... Tampa Bay gets the stop they need. But, you know, they got really bad field position. They had to go all the way downfield. So they're trying to... Score and then get the two point conversion to tie it up and go to overtime. But Baker Mayfield threw an interception and that was pretty much it. Detroit wins and they go to the NFC title game, which I haven't seen in a while. So next Sunday night in pretty much prime time on that great channel of Fox. On Fox at 6 30 in Santa Clara. 70,000 screaming faithful 49er fans are going to cheer on the Niners as they take on the Detroit Lions. 
might be a little bit tough, even though that they're, the Lions defense is not that great. I mean, their pass rush sucks. And pretty much their secondary is kind of suspect too. So, kind of feels like Green Bay, but a little bit less tough. I think the Lions can match up with the Lions. And pretty much Jared Goff is 3-7. and seven. Or 3 and what was it? 3 and 5, 3 and something like that. He's 3 and 7, I think it is. He's 3 and 7 against the Niners. And he has not won in San Fran. I wonder why, because you've been getting your ass raped without lube when you were on the the freaking Los Angeles Rams. They had to go all the way to Detroit. And guess what? You're gonna get your ass kicked again. We'll make it three and eight. You go bye bye. Bye bye! You go bye bye! Pretty much. Right, Macho Boo? Yeah, exactly. Boo, don't you eat the cookie? No, we're not gonna turn him into a cookie just yet, but. Gotta let him cook first, you know what I mean? Do you like eggs? Well, pretty much I do, Mr. Evil Boo. Crush them like an egg. But, I mean, we'll see. It should be a great game. It might be another nail biter, but I think the Niners are going to win that game. Go on to the Super Bowl. In two weeks, well, three weeks from today, but two weeks from Sunday. And we got that. I think the Niners will win. As I, I mean, if it's if the Lions going to the Super Bowl, you know they're going to lose. There's no way the Lions can match up with the Ravens or their opponent next Sunday afternoon at 3.30 on Channel 2. And that is the, well, once again, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs pay off the referees. They got to stop that. Seriously, they, they, how many... How many games do he have to win in the playoffs and pay off and, and Super Bowl to pay off the refs? How many times, Mahomes? How many times? The Kansas City Chiefs are probably one of the most pathetic franchises I ever seen in my life. Yeah, they won two Super Bowls, big deal. But uh, by the way, the first one when they won Super Bowl Fifty Four, they cheated. Last year, pretty much. Kind of cheated, even though the, the Eagles, uh, you know, near the end. But, goddamn, tonight's game. I mean, how many stupid calls did the, did the Chiefs get? I mean, really. But, the Bills get the ball at about, about uh, I think it was three minutes left. They go downfield. Uh, couldn't score. They were down by three. 24-21. Had a Gimme fucking field goal, and what happens? No Norwood! Basically, a Scott, uh, I think his first name is Scott Norwood. You know, the guy who missed the field goal in the Super Bowl way back when? Just right, right! What happens? Gimme field goal, missed it. How do you fucking miss that? How? It was a gimme. Pretty much a gimme. And he missed it. Guess what? Right, right. So, Mahomes and company. I think it's the Taylor Swift effect. I pretty much think it's the Taylor Swift effect. You know, the, you know Roger Baddell and the freaking NFL, they want to put freaking Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl so we're getting more ratings. Well, let's put Taylor Swift in. We got Usher at the, at the halftime show. Let's put... Taylor Swift in the, in, the, in the press box and show her like 55 times and not even 55. Let's just show her like every five seconds. How do, how do you do that stupid heart thing? You know? I can't even do it, so. I can do this, but I can't do. I guess I can kind of do the heart, but that's all she's gonna do. Do stupid hearts to her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey. Oh, fucking game. And you know the referee's gonna get paid off. But it is what it is. So the Chiefs win 24 21, go back to the AFC title game, and they got a Rue Boy. Next week, next week's gonna be pretty damn explosive in Baltimore. The Ravens 
against the Chiefs. The winner goes to the Super Bowl. Let's see what happens with that. So, if the Niners do win next week, which I think they will, we can see a rematch from Super Bowl 46 with the Ravens, and that's going to be really tough. And we thought, and we thought the Christmas game was tough. But basically, the Niners just fell asleep. Had a really bad game. You know, could just we were running it down the down the, the Ravens' throats, and just the freaking Ravens' defense just like kind of showed up and kind of exposed Brock Purdy a little bit. I think Brock got a little bit nervous, but still. That's not, I, I highly doubt that's going to happen again. I don't think it's going to happen again. I think Lamar Jackson's going to... He's going to choke when it really matters. It might be next Sunday or at the Super Bowl. He's going to choke. It's going to be the same old Lamar Jackson. But we'll see. So, might get a rematch of, of Super Bowl 46. I'm not, super, sorry. Super Bowl 46 with the Ravens. Or... The Chiefs somehow make the the greatest upset this year in the playoffs and beat the Ravens at Baltimore, which they can do, but it's going to be tough. But if the Chiefs somehow win, the Niners win, we get a rematch of Super Bowl 54. Mm, and my brother from another mother, you remember that very well. I know, I know, but four years ago, Pretty much around the day when sadly he, uh, he was taken from me and everybody and pretty much my <laughs> he was taken from me basically four years ago almost to, almost to the day in February not the 11th but it was a little bit earlier than that but pretty much four years ago the Chiefs somehow somehow some way won that Super Bowl against the Niners and the Niners choked a 10 point lead. So, if it's Niners and the Chiefs, guess who gets that? the home game is, is basically a home game for the Niners. And how fitting would it be for the Niners to get their revenge from four years ago on the Raiders' home field and really rub it into Jimmy G? I'm telling you, the revenge of the revenge of the revenge of the revenge tour will conclude at the Super Bowl and the Niners will, will get number six. Mahomes, you ain't getting number three. And the Ravens, you ain't getting another Super Bowl. I don't give a shit. But whatever happens, happens. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it looks like we're going to get Ravens, Niners. It looks like it. But you never know in the wonderful world of the NFL in the league where they play for pay. Just remember that. But I, I just can't see the Lions upsetting the Niners at in in uh, Santa Clara. I just can't. Unless the Niners don't even sh I mean don't show up at all. But it's gonna be a tough game. I think it won't be that close. I mean the Niners are already favored by seven points, but the over under is fifty. So I don't know if you take the you, I would take the points. As far as the over-under, eh, you know, pick your poison on that one. I would probably go under. But I'm taking the Niners and the points. So, And the other game, I mean, it doesn't matter who you pick. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, on paper, yeah, I would pick the Ravens. Because they're just um, annihilating everybody. But, I mean, there's a little, little, little bitty... Thing in my gut. There's not that much in my gut as it is, but it's like I do this colonoscopy prep tomorrow. It's good. Yo, yo. I'm already starting. It's 1.41 in the morning here in the Northeast. And I'm drink I had to I have to start drinking water. Then I got I gotta go to sleep. I gotta get up in the morning. I can't even eat solid food the entire day and Tuesday morning. So basically, 24 to 36 hours of no eating, which sucks. But, you know, by Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, when I'm watching NXT, I'm going to have a feast. 
I'm gonna pig out. I don't give a fuck. I might just go to the bar and get drunk. No, I'm not gonna do that, but. I'm not gonna do it, but tomorrow is gonna be a really rough day to, for me. Really rough, because I gotta drink. Mostly, I gotta drink water. It says I can drink soda, but then I looked it up. Can't drink Pepsi. This has to be clear, like this clear, so I can. I have to. I'm, if I want go want to get some soda, like, I have to go uh, go to the store and get some Sprite or Sierra Mist because that's clear. Can't drink Pepsi because you can't see it. It's dark. It's black, basically. So no Pepsi tomorrow. Tuesday, yes, I can. That's a, uh, in the afternoon at night, and then from there, good. But yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a pain in the ass. Really big pain in the ass. I mean, literally will be a pain in the ass. Cause I gotta fast. I gotta. I gotta have soup. That's the only thing I can actually eat is soup, because it's clear. It's a broth. So, so I gotta make my. I already made my solution. My uh, that gook. I gotta drink. I made made that. It's ready. It's in the. It's in the fridge, chilling. It's cold. I put some. Put the. Uh, I should have put it. I should have waited on that. I put it in the solution. So, and then I shook it like six thousand times. To, you know, so probably when I, I I might have messed it up, and if I did, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if I go in Tuesday morning to say, like, "Oh, you fucked up," or they do the they do the they do the things like, "Oh, you fucked up." I'm like, "Oh, now you tell me you put the thing up my ass." You did it wrong. What did you do? I was like, "I followed the instructions clearly." Fill to the line. Did that. I put the little, um, they gave me a little, um, flavoring. You know, the, the lemon, the, tastes like lemon. Put that in with the, you know, I put that in, put the water in, shook it up real nice. Turn that son of a bitch sideways and stick, no. Shook it up as much as I could, and I started drinking it. I mean, how did I, how the fuck did I mess it up? I, I followed the directions to it, basically to a T. I don't know. But, if I screw up, I don't give a shit. I just want to get it done and over with so I don't have to do it again. But, yeah, tomorrow tomorrow is going to be a pain, a real pain in the ass. And I mean that literally... After, like, from 5.30 on, I'm going to be... Sh I'm gonna be uh, in and out of the bathroom. We're probably just in the bathroom for like the next, the entire night, and I'm gonna miss freaking wrestling. But I have it on. But you know, I can have have it on like blast. I can I can't see it because I'm in the bathroom. Either that, or I just wait the entire night and you know either go in and out or that's what she said, <laughs> or whatever. But. But, yeah, by this time, by, by actually this time tomorrow night, I'll probably be pooping my brains out. Or well, hopefully done pooping my brains out. So I don't want to wake up. I really, I really don't want to try to go to sleep. And in my sleep, I poop my pants and I, and I, I ugh, just not good waking up to soiled, smelly underwear. And the bed's all smelly. And I got to change, I got to change my sheets. I got to. Clean the bed with, with disinfectant and everything. I clean it. Big pain in the ass to do that. So. Not fun. So. So hopefully I don't get that tomorrow. Uh, th by this time tomorrow night. And by the time I wake up Tuesday morning. When I have to go to the the, the, f the place to get my uh, thing. So. But I'll get through it, you know. I'm a, I'm a fight. I'm a champ. I'll take it like a, I'll take it up the ass like a champ, not like that. But you know what I meant. Cause you know, knowing you idiots, like oh, he, he said. Did you see what he said? He likes to take it up the ass. That's you guys, cause that's what you've been doing in your little circle jerk for fifteen fifteen years, sucking off each other's small cocks and then sticking it up, you know, your dirty assholes. And then, you know, jerking off and 
jerking off to each other by watching me. Just don't splash on me because I don't go that way. But stay obsessed. That's what you've been doing for 15 plus years. We're getting close to 15 years. Right now at 14 and a half. We'll hit 15 years in um, August. That's like eight, uh, pretty much uh, six months from now. Just about six months. We'll be hitting year 15. Level 15 on this fucking website. And we'll continue. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. It might take some time off. I don't know. By the summertime. I don't know yet, but... Depends on a few things, and, um... We'll move on. From there. Alright. Enough about that. Boo! Funky! Let's get to the video at hand. I wasted 25 minutes... 26 minutes of your time. I don't give a shit. My video, I can go... For how long I want to go with my monologue or whatever I feel like talking about before I get to the main part of the video. If you don't like it, too bad, but you watched it anyway. Thank you. Now, if, you, if I made your head spin, good. Good, I did my job. But it is what it is. And that's that. Ugh. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, on this late Sunday night, January the 21st, 2024, or if you're watching tomorrow or somewhere else from some other time, it is now January the 22nd, 2024, and it is time for your late and out-of-date AEW Collision Review for this past Saturday, January the 20th, 2024. As we're a little, little over a month away from our AEW's first pay-per-view of the year, Revolution, from the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, South Carolina. Alright, we pretty much got two matches announced for, for Revolution. Sting's last match, possibly against the Bucks. Darby will be with him as well. And also, Daddy possibly will be taking. Uh, is going to be taking on freshly squeezed orange juice. That's Mister Orange Cassidy for the AEW Intercontinental Title. And we see what happens with that. So those are the two matches. So maybe we'll start to get more storyline progression and more matches that possibly could be announced in the next next month or so, but we'll see. But, last night, pretty solid show. The main event was the Blackpool Cuck Club of the Swiss Superman, Claudio Castagnoli. Welcome to Claudio's Cafe. I am Claudio. We drink coffee. Welcome to my cafe. Alright, so we have Claudio teaming up with Brian Danielson. Yes! As they take on, well, Kind of reuniting as uh, LAX-ish, but they know each other from the old ver the not the old version, the kind of new version of LAX. But anyway, we got the AEW Triple Crown Champion, Eddie Kingston, teaming up with the Funky Monkey himself, Ortiz. That's your main event. We also had Buddy Murphy taking on the Dancing Fool. Mm. Daniel Garcia, interesting stuff, done the Rosa on the show in um, women's action, and a whole lot more, and Edge was also on the show, but we'll talk about Edge in a little bit, but still, a pretty solid show from start to finish, and let's get into it, let's not waste any more of your time, and uh, that's it, alright, so, Collision emanated from the Kafitz Arena, in St. Louis, Missouri, kind of outside Kansas City. A lot of people wearing the Chiefs jerseys in the crowd. Alright, so our commentary team this week. We had the Hermaphrodite himself, and the biggest Met fan I know, next to Taz. Kevin Kelly, my friend. We had Kevin Kelly. My good friend, Nigel McGinnis, me love. And 
another great man, my good friend, a man who should be in the fucking Hall of Fame, right next to JR, and that is Tony Baloney Giovanni. Yep, Tony returned uh, last night. Took some time off. I'm going to afford a day off. Take some time to recharge the battery a little bit. You know, because you're old. <laughs> you're out of shit. Alright, so Tony Baloney, Kevin Kelly, and Nigel McGinnis on commentary. And um, let's get into it. Alright, so we start off the show with the opening sequence. You know, Elton John sings us, sings us into the show. Because it's Saturday night. And you know what that means. It's time to fight. But Saturday night, it's all right for fighting. Like he's, like he wonderfully sang. All right, so then the pyro goes off. We are live from St. Louis, Missouri. And we start off with big, beefy men slapping the fuck out of each other. We have Shane Taylor of Shane Taylor Productions, along with his good buddy, Tiger Style, Lee Moriarty. They come out. And the former Ring of Honor television champion and former Ring of Honor six-man tag team champion, Shane Taylor, takes on John Moxley, D-Ron Garay, the Vile Thing. You mean Vaughn? You mean Big Vaughn? You did say Vaughn, right? Big Vaughn? You did say Vaughn, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. He's due. Okay. Vaughn, I only got one thing to say to you. Strike this motherfucker out! Okay. Heh. <laughs> dun Winning! Dun it dun Dick Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen's a great man. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so Shane Taylor and... Moxley, you know, big beefy man slapping meat match. Hmm. Uh, so they slug it out at the start. Neither one really getting anywhere. And then Shane Taylor knocks him into the corner. And then a big time, woo, chop takes Moxley down. But he goes back with some chops of his own. Then they go back and forth with some chops. So we got a chop fest. Uh, and then. Shane Taylor hits a running splash in the corner, then he back drops his way out of a pile driver attempt. Really, Mox? You gotta. You really think you can pile drive Shane Taylor? Because Shane Taylor's huge. I'm not gonna say the other word, because he might come and kick my ass. So. And I did meet Shane Taylor way right back in the day. Good guy. He's a great guy. But I digress. Alright, so. Get a backdrop after out of the pile driver. They go to the outside. Moxley sends uh, Shane Taylor into the ring steps. Ow! And then Nigel starts choking that uh, about how Moxley is probably gonna bleed in this match. I mean, and they did show that war him and uh, Shingo had at Battle of the Valley, bloody as fuck. And Moxley won. I mean, he hit everything on Shingo, and Shingo just kicked, started kicking out of everything. And then finally, after hitting a pale, uh, you know, Death Rider through the chairs, finally Shingo stood, uh, stayed down, and Moxley won this bloody as fuck match. Crazy. Danielson was on the show, he, I think he won his match. But all in all, I mean, Battle of Valley is pretty damn good. The la probably the last time we'll see Okada. Still don't know where he's going to go. He's kind of weighing his options right now. Even even Jim Barnett, our good friend Corny Jim, Jim Cornette, you know, Corny, he even said Okada should go to AEW because the money would be better. Really now? I mean, Tony does have, to have more money than Hunter, so. But, I mean, Hunter can just... Prime away from Tony Khan and probably fuck him up like he fucks every other Japanese star up, right? Nakamura, Asuka, Io, Kairi, Zaya Lee, even though she's Chinese, but. 
Dante Chen, who's Chinese too, but usually the Oriental stars not don't do that great in WWE. I don't think they ever have. I mean, Oscar was great, and then pfft, down the drain, comes back, wins the belt, loses to Bianca, who then lost it to EO. And EO's held it for a little over a hundred some odd days now. What was, what was the actual number? 175, 76, somewhere around there? She's getting there. She's getting there. If she holds it through WrestleMania, she might hold it for a year. I don't think she will, but I think she, I still think she's going to lose a Bailey, most likely, at the at uh, WrestleMania. Sucks. She has to lose it sometime. I don't want her to lose it at Mania, but... And then... Yeah, she, she'll lose it at Mania... Kyrie, uh, Kyrie and Asuka will lose the women's tag team belts because they're going to win it this Friday from the Dancing Queens. The hold of the Mania, lose it to, I don't know, maybe Trinity and Sasha Banks. Because you know Sasha's going to be at the Rumble this Saturday night, you know. If she's not, I'll be surprised. I still think she's going to be at number, she's going to be there at number 30. So, Sasha and Naomi, you know, Boss Glow will come back. And cause havoc. And win the tag team belts at Mania. So Asuka will be 0-7. Seven, seven straight losses at Mania. That is crazy. Ever since WrestleMania 32. When she lost to that horse face bitch. Charlotte Flair. She has not won at all at Mania. Six straight losses. That's sad. She lost last year to Rhea Ripley. Well, that's Rhea Ripley, so, I mean, come on. Mommy, I mean. She should have beat her, though. That would have been funny, but. I mean, they're going to make her lose again. It's going to piss me the fuck off. I mean, Nakamura lost at Mania to AJ. WrestleMania 36. Uh, not 36. 30, uh, 37. No, when was... Yeah, it was 37. I was right. Oh, not the first time. 37. Lost to AJ when he won the Royal Rumble. And Oscar won the Rumble at 32. No, it was. No, because I know Oscar won at 32. Uh, uh, she won the Royal Rumble, I think, the same year as, as Shinsuke. So both of them lost at 32. Sucks, right? 2016. 17, something like that. Wait. Yeah, because 40, that was eight years ago. So, it's 2016. I was right. I can add. I just can't think sometimes. That's late, too. But, in any case... It's just like every time that they bring up a... Right, they bring in a Japanese sensation, Asuka Kairi, who's a two-time NXT champion. Um, two, I think she's gonna be, she's gonna be a, I think, a three-time... Uh, tag team champion with Asuka. You know, really, you know, Kyrie's really haven't done much, really, but. And EO, I mean, just a god in NXT, two time NXT champion, current SmackDown Women's Champion for 170 something days. It's gonna come to an end, probably around 200 and change. I mean, nice rain, but still. We're gonna give it to Bailey. I think the fourth time. I don't know how long, how many times she's held a SmackDown title. But there you go. But at least the Black Lotus Triad will be a thing probably after WrestleMania, after after uh, the Rumble when they finally kick Bailey out. After I think I think Bailey is gonna um, either lose the Rumble because of. The Black Lotus Triad. Because Ido doesn't, really doesn't have a match. Kyrie, uh, Kyrie and Asuka might not have a match. Or if they do, it'll probably be a rematch for the women's tag team belts. Which they'll win. So they'll be there. And then they might come out in the women's, uh, women's Royal Rumble to help Bailey win. But in turn, make her lose and eliminate her. And then Bailey gets all pissy pissy, like, oh, you know. I don't need you anymore. But 
you know, damage control is going to be pretty much gone. By it, by time, by the time we hit the elimination chamber. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, we move on. Uh, all right. So let's get back to Moxley and, and Shane Taylor. So we go to the outside. Moxley sends Shane Taylor into the ring steps. Ow! Nigel makes a joke about Moxley's about to bleed. Uh, and then Lee Moriarty gets in a cheap shot, and Shane Taylor grabs a basic chin lock, circa 1904, as they get back in. Uh, then he goes up, goes to the middle rope, tries for a big splash, and no water in the pool for you, sir. Which allows Moxley to grab a running Gilmore Kata! Bang! Not as effective when I do it, though. Because when I hit that running cutter, it's like, pretty much a wrap. But, it is what it is. Then the King Kong Lariat gives Moxley a near fall. Shane Taylor comes back, hits a big time clothesline. But then they, they get back up, they trade headbutts. I was like, oh, we're going to see some blood. No, nope, we didn't see blood. Uh, Shane Taylor then hits a power bomb, And then uh, gets pulled into a triangle choke. As he was trying to pin Moxley. And then Shane Taylor with that brute strength of his. Deadlifts his way out. Moxley elbows him, elbows him in the face. And then they get back up. They slug it out again. And then Moxley pulls Ta Shane Taylor into the bulldog choke. And then basically knocks him the fuck out. He passed out really. But nine and a half minute match. Pretty damn good. 3.25 out of 5 stars for that. And we move on. And then after the match, Moxley gets the mic. And basically says, you know, 2024 is going to be, be my year. I'm not taking anybody's bullshit anymore. So if you want to be my opponent or you, you want to be my teammate, you better keep up with me. Ooh. Moxley gets serious. He wants that belt back. That AEW World Title Belt. Oh, well, we have to go through Joe to get that. But we'll see. But good match from from Mr. Moxley, and that's it. Move on. All right, there we get a look back at send for the man. Hook, get in here. Get in here. We get Doritos. Let's go. I can't eat it, but thank you. Well, Hook, ladies and gentlemen, we see him. Taking on Samoa Joe from Dynamite, which was a like pretty started off as boring and then ended wild. And Samoa Joe retained, obviously. And then the hangman comes out, Adam Page doing some cowboy shit with Swerve. Which that could be a triple threat match at Revolution for the belt. Hopefully Swerve wins, but I doubt that. We'll see. See what happens. Alright, so we get that. And we move on. Alright, match number two on your scorecard. Hey kids, is Edge. So Edge comes out for the Cope. Oh, what is it called? The Cope Open. The basic the open challenge. And this week was last uh, he fought Grant Garrison. Then he fought uh who did he fight the week before that? Um I think I forget who he fought. Uh, no, he fought. I think he fought uh, Lee Moriarty last week. I forget. But this week, he fights another high flyer, Dante Martin of Top Flight. So, get to the match. Match was great. Uh, so, Edge grabs a basic headlock to start. Dante comes, gets right back up with some leapfrogs into an armbar. And then they, uh, they're on the ground, they get back up, Edge manages to send Dante to the outside as we go to an early break, come back, Edge grabs another basic headlock, circa 1905. Uh, I just lost my notes, sorry about that. 
Uh, okay, so B Edge grabs a basic headlock as uh, as we come back from break. Dante fights his way up, gets sent to the apron, where he has to fight out of a sunset flip bomb to the floor. Hmm. Then the Hurricane Rana takes Edge down as a uh, commentary thinks that Dante's balance and equilibrium a little bit off. I don't know, maybe he has vertigo. I don't know. They were kind of talking about that. It's like Dante might have vertigo. Uh-oh. Hey, that rhymes. Anyway. Alright, so they go back in. And we get a half Nelson slam. Uh, gets broken up. Edge misses the spear in the corner. Dante hits the nose dive. For near fall. Edge, Edge, Edge grabs the rope, even though his legs are on the rope. And, uh... The ref the uh the com the referee and commentary is like, hey, he's supposed to on the rope. And then commentary says Martin has vertigo. Ooh, if he has vertigo, oh boy. And he just came back from a really gruesome leg injury. Hmm. He he just can't stay off the injury list. He just can't. So, if he legit has vertigo, he's going to be out a while. I mean, Kenny had vertigo. How long did it take him to come back? Like, about a year? Now, speaking of Kenny, Kenny, I don't know what's going to happen with Kenny. I think Kenny's career is over. Because he's, he's thinking about getting surgery for the diverticulitis he has. Sucks to have your career end because of a stupid freaking uh, stomach disease. Like, diverticulitis. Not fun. I mean, Brock Lesnar had it, but he came back eventually. It was like freaking beast, no pun intended. So, who knows with Kenny? If Kenny gets his surgery, I don't know if he's gonna come back. He might have to call it quits and just be a guy in the back, you know, an agent or something, some type of producer, like you know, Chris Daniels is. I mean, he wrestles occasionally now in Ring of Honor. Losing most of the time, even though he got a win about a week or so ago. I don't. I really don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know with Kenny. Uh, but if Dante is out, mm, it's like three. I think it's three injuries in a span of about two years. He got the leg injury. Now he has vertigo, and I think he had a shoulder injury. And you think wrestling's fake? Right. By the way, go on my Peter Gilmore channel. Go to my community tab. I have a. I, I shared a video about my good buddy Del X Man. Who basically, you know, told it like it is. And he said, You think it's fake? Go well, watch this video. So I shared his video saying, telling how wrestling is pretty much real. It's not fake. It's pretty much kayfabe in a way. But the injuries are real. You get chopped, it hurts for real. You take a bump, it hurts for real. If you do it improp, uh, you don't do it properly. You get hit with a, you get hit in the head with a steel chair. That's fake, right? Oh, I got hit in the head. Yeah, but then you have a concussion after. Uh, tell me that's fake. He has a fake concussion. How's that possible? You're a doctor. Can you actually diagnose that by yourself by just looking at the guy? He's like, it's like his eyes are glazed over. Oh, he's drunk. No. He just got hit with a chair and he's drunk. I mean, really now? Shut the fuck up, you fucking marks. And like I said before, and I'll say it again until I'm blue in the face. If you think wrestling is fake, then I dare any one of you motherfuckers go to a wrestling school. Do the training, which is hard enough. That's real shit. Do the training, take a bump, take a chair shot to the head, take a chop. You're like, oh, it hurts. Or, Fake, right? Then I'll just be there looking at you, slack you in the fucking face, and then give you a Gilmore cutter on top of that. Then I'll just look, I'll just stand over your lifeless body and go, it's fake, right? And you tell it to the doctor that's stitching you up. Or, pfft. Tell to the corner. Well, I can't tell to the corner if you're dead, but. I mean, stop me when I'm telling lies, okay? 
I mean, I've been through it. I know how it feels. I've been trained. It hurts. It legit hurts, dude. That bat is not... It's not a forgiving bat. You think it's... You think it's... Oh, it's bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. No! It's not. It's basically steel on top of wood on top of padding, which makes it bounce on top of canvas. And just remember, when you hit that, the, you know, the hardest part of the ring, mm, 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 you're going to be wanting to see a chiropractor or, or a physical therapist because your back is going to be shot for a while. And these, these men and women that do it for over 300 days a year, they're not the same. They're putting their bodies on the line, cutting their life expectancy pretty much in half. You know, when accidents happen, man, people die. I mean, Owen Hart sadly passed away in the ring. He fell from the rafters. Hit his head on the turnbuckle, whiplash his neck, basically was done. Same thing with Paraguayer Jr. Took a basic move, which is the 619, took it incorrectly, because he got tripped in the ropes, and he, and he landed wrong, and he snapped his head back, killed him instantly. You know, Bruiser Brody got, I think he got um, stabbed. He died. I mean, crazy stuff, man. People get hurt, severely hurt. They hurt, they, they could break their necks, they could break their leg, and they're out for months and years. I mean, look at Big E. Big E's been out for over a year, and you don't even think he's coming back at all. I mean, he's like, I want to come back, but I want to, you know, I don't want to rush to come back. And God forbid, you know, I come back and something else happens, I'm paraplegic for life. Or possibly dead. You don't want to hear that. I don't want to see it in the ring. But people get dumped on their fucking head because either they miss or, you know, it's just an accident. I mean, look at Melo and Austin Theory. Theory landed on his fucking neck and was lucky to not have broken that neck. And freaking Melo could have had really bad facial uh, contusions or... Broken orbital bone, broken eye socket, whatever. I mean, because theory landed on his face. It's, it's just crazy stuff, man. Sometimes they, you know, they don't take the move correctly, and you get hit with a power driver. Neck snapped. Good night. You're out for a few months because your neck is broken, and then I mean, look at Edge. Triple fusion surgery on his neck, but he's back. Soraya Knight, Paige, had a whiplash after, you know, after uh, Mercedes Monet, Sasha, kicked her, it was by accident, her neck snapped back, she got whiplash, her career was basically over, and then she had surgery on her neck, I think she had neck fusion surgery as well, and she's back on a part-time basis, she barely fights these days, because you want to protect her, and then really protect Edge at the same time, but... Thunder Rosa had really bad back surgery. Took her a long time to come back. She's back. Starting to come back. You know, we gotta worry about her back, too. Hey, I said back a lot, but... Hey. I mean, it is what it is. These people have these injuries. They're out for like a year. Unless you're seeing it, you come back in four months. But you're going to tell me this, all those injuries that, that those people got are fake? The triple, a, triple, a triple neck fusion surgery is fake. Come on. So, please, tell me. Tell me once again how it's fake. I mean, seriously. We know that it's predetermined. We know that. The moves are choreographed. We knew that from the beginning. But the injuries, pretty much real. The training, real. I mean, if you don't, if you don't believe me, 
Go ask Amazing Red. Go ask the people that trained with Amazing Red at House of Glory. They'll, t they'll tell you. All those people that went to House of Glory and got trained by Amazing Red. Or even got trained by Joel Maximo. They'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. I'm tell telling you from experience. It's fuck. It fucking hurts. I mean, my, yeah, my back is shot as it is. Not from that, but it's from other, um, when I worked in retail, when I was doing stock, I was picking up heavy fucking boxes and shit. Not fun. And it was, there was days I had sciatica run down my fucking leg into my back. And I fell to the floor once and I almost couldn't get up. I almost had to go to the hospital. Because I couldn't, I could barely get up. I put the thing down, I, and then I got a shot of, of pain right down my leg and in my back. I fell to the ground, like, five, cus five uh, people that were in the store, cus five customers came and said, oh, you all right? I'm like, I'm all right. And then they call for the, my, my, uh, my store manager. She comes over and says, Pete, you okay? I'm like, oh, my, I hurt, my, I hurt my, my leg, my back. So you want you want to go to emergency room? I'm like no, I want to. I was like no, I'm a fighter. I'm gonna finish my shift, and that's what I did. I finished my shift. I went on my break, and then my manager keeps asking me, "So you want to go to the hospital? You want to go to the hospital?" I'm like no, I'm almost done with my shift. I'm gonna go home, and then I'm gonna if if it if it hurts in the morning, then I'm gonna go to the hospital. Which thankfully I didn't have to do because I had the day off the next day. So I just stayed home and rested and put some. You know, lidocaine patches on my back. And then I was fine after that. But still, my back well, it hasn't been the same since pretty much that. But I still can be able to work with my music job. And recently, I don't have to lift that much. I mean, I do have to, like, you know, carry some equipment here and there. But but not heavy equipment like the speakers or anything like that. I, I move them in. Into the studio, and I move them into the truck or the car, or whatever. I can I can pick those up. They're not that heavy, but still, you know, I wake up in tremendous back pain every freaking day. I don't think it's my mattress or anything, but but I wake up in really bad back pain. I have really bad back pain. I go to physical therapy for that, <gasps> along with my knee. That's from a different, uh, you know, just. just I, you know, different injuries and everything. I'm getting arthritis. My, you know, my, like I said, my back is like messed up. Probably because I'm getting probably I'm borderline diabetic. I'll admit that, but I don't care. But you know, so maybe my my bot my kidneys are shutting down. Oh, not good as they were, but you know, but I did go for tests and my kidneys are good, so. I just gotta watch it a little bit, you know. You know, because diabetes kind of runs in my family, so. And, you know, who has it too, so. Not fun. So. But I can still, you know, do a job. Whether it be a at-home job or pretty much now, I'm out of working from home. I'm at the studio most of the time now. But at least I don't have to overexert myself when I go into the, when I, when I uh, go into the city. Or if I, you know, even if I'm home and I'm doing chores, I don't overexert myself because my back still kicks, hurts like hell, and I don't want to pop six thousand pills into my system. I don't, so I try to like limit what I do. But. I mean, I can still work. People can't. People have. <laughs> people have back injuries. They can't work, supposedly. But I mean, if you have a legit back injury, I mean that's one thing. But if you have a back injury and can, you know, still kind of function, you can still do a, a, a at at home job. Or you can do a job where you don't have to do much, not much heavy lifting. You can do a, a desk job. So. 
you know, just uh, deal with it. So that's what I'm doing with it. I mean, I'm trying to deal with the back pain and my knee pain. That's why I go to physical therapy. I'm old. What do you want me to do? I'm 47. So I'm almost near 50 and my body is about is breaking down already. You know, by the time I hit 50, we all know what happens at 50. <laughs> down the drain it goes. But, you know, I do work. I do um, exercise. I do go for runs on the weekends, usually because I'm off on the weekend. So, but I don't do it when it's in the winter. It's cold as balls, and I can't really go out for a good run. Especially when it's, like, 21 degrees outside. I'm like, I'm not going out. I'll just do some light push-ups and some sit-ups here and there. Some stretches and some DDP yoga if I have to. Not your mama's yoga, but, you know, I'm trying to get back into shape. Because I kind of neglected yoga for a while. That's probably why my back is shattered. But it is what it is. But in any case, you know. That's probably one of, one of my goals this year. Is trying to get into some uh, is a good health. Mentally, I'm work, right, I've been working on that. Uh, since Pretty much since last year. Since, since uh, near the end of last year. And I'm continuing that into this year. It's going pretty well. I do have some, you know. Some... Uh, panic attacks from here and there, but still getting over it, but, you know, it's a struggle, you know, it's a day-by-day thing, so, but, hopefully by the summertime, going into next, uh, going into the end of this year, into 2025, I'll hopefully be in a better mental state, physically, hopefully I can get back into some, uh, better health, and, um, we'll see what happens with that, that's pretty much my goals for this year, is just get into a better, uh, get better uh, mentally and physically, and then I got some other goals that I, I'm gonna I put off to. I have, but that's like like little goals, not big huge goals. But I do have some uh, minor goals I, uh, I want to accomplish by the end of the year. But we'll see what happens with that. All right, talked enough, way too long about that. All right, so uh, let's get back to Edge and Dante Martin. Uh, so, okay, so, Mar- uh, Dante hits the nose dive when they fall, Edge gets, uh, gets the ropes, uh, then we talked about Dante having vertigo, that's not good, goes up top, kind of, kind of, look, he looks really bad, he looked loopy, because he, I, because he did a move, and Edge, when Edge missed the spear, he went to do, like, a float over to the rope, and he kind of went, bloop, 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 kind of messed up a little bit, so I was like, hmm. But anyway, Dante gets caught on top, but he's fine enough to hit a sunset flip bomb for the no- for another near fall. Goes for a springboard, and Edge speared the living crap out of him in midair. Then he locks in the grindhouse that uh, Crippler Crossface made famous by you know who Benoit, and uh, finishes off Dante in just under twelve minutes. But still, match was pretty good, and they gave it three point two five. Out of five stars, and there you go. That's it. All right, after the match, Tony Baloney gets in the ring uh, with Edge. Edge is like, hey, where you been? And uh, th- Tony's like, what were you thinking doing these open challenges? So Edge is like, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of whoopy. So he, sa- he says, I see a bunch of young guys going after me. After, after me, instead of a, you know, a veteran guy, like a Hangman, Adam Page, or Moxley, stuff like that. So, he says, uh, they want to take a bite out of him. Take a bite out of crime, like McGruff would say. Uh, they want to take a bite out of me, and there's a lot to eat. And he's like, I'm a five-course dinner. I don't know what the hell that means. Well, why don't you say it then, dumbass? Yeah, you're a five-course meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and I don't know what that, what's after that. I don't want to know either. So basically, he wants a veteran to come in and beat his ass or take up the challenge. Oh, and uh, this Wednesday night, he has a challenge, my friends. As uh, we found out near the end of the show, that Edge will take on the legend from Japan. No, not Okada. The other legend, Menuro Suzuki, Kasadinare! 
Oh. Oh, Adam Copeland. Oh, I feel bad for you. You better run for your life. You, I think Adam Copeland's got to fear for his life like Tony Khan did back in, um, <laughs> back in last summer. Because Suzuki, Minoru Suzuki is going to fuck Edge up. Edge will still win the match, but he, he's going to go to war with Minoru Suzuki. He's going to chop him like chopped liver. Chopped him like shit. Hmm. But he does say that he's coming for the TNT title and he's going to bring it. He's going to win the belt and bring it back to, to TNT and on Saturday nights. Uh, and bring it back to St. Louis next time he's in St. Louis. I think he will win at Revolution. He will win it outright. No BS from Luchasaurus, Nick fucking Wayne, and his hot smoking mom, Shayna Wayne. I think Edge will win the belt, and he's going to have a nice, nice second reign with it, instead of five seconds. But, we'll see what happens with that. Let me move on. Alright, then we go to a promo from Claudio and Brian Danielson. Danielson. Yes! Alright, they're not happy with losing to Eddie, Eddie Kingston, in the Continental Classic Tournament. And basically, they want revenge on Eddie in the main event. I'm going to see what happens with that. Alright, so I give that 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then we go to Lexi Nair in the back with her guest Dante Martin, Darius Martin, his brother, and Action Andretti. So pretty much Top Flight Andretti. Uh, so they talk about, you know, Dante's uh, tough match, a tough loss to Edge. And then... Private Party comes in, Mark Quinn, and Isaiah Cassidy. Can I get a, oh, yeah? Well, I would say, oh, but doesn't do that shit no more. So, they tease him about losing, and then um, mock him, and then Gary's like, oh, you want to be big men? What happened last week when you cheated to win? Let's run that back. So, Private Party's like, oh, you, you, you're serious, right? You want to do it again and lose again? Okay. So, looks like we're going to get a rematch between Private Party, who are now heels, I guess, now. Which is kind of interesting. And take it on Top Flight, probably next week on Collision. And we'll see what happens with that. Alright, so I get that 2.5 out of 5 stars, and that's it. Alright, so we move on with that. Alright, then we go to our next match. I think it's match number three. We go to the women, the lovely ladies of the of AEW. We have Queen Amanada, the female Ricochet. Well, not so much Ricochet, but she is the one and only. That's Sky Blue's bitch. Uh, she takes on Thunder Rosa. Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Rosa. Yay! Alright, Thunder Rosa, as always, you know, Melanie Cervantes, that's her real name. Looking hot, as always, in that Maria Brink-inspired headdress. It's always good when you when you have wrestlers that uh, kind of get inspired by the mighty Indus moment. I mean, if Julia Hart basically comes out like Maria Brink 2.0 with the... the, the, the Sick like me hat. Basically. There you go. There's inspiration from in this moment. Allie the Bunny. Remember when she came out with that bunny mask? Where did that get inspired from? Oh, that's right. In this moment. Mainly the own. Her theme song was Sick Like Me. By who? Oh yeah. In this moment. So, in this moment, you think they don't do anything in the wrestling world. Oh, you're mistaken. I still would love them at WrestleMania, but still. Is it ever going to happen? Probably, probably not. They did have a song that was used by Impact. The gun, I think it was The Gun Show. I think. I, gotta, I don't even remember, actually. 
I know they did, they did, a, they did, a, they did a, one of the songs was used for a pay-per-view, I think. It was, I think it was Gunshot, I could be wrong. But I know, I know for almost a fact that in this moment, their music was used in wrestling. Besides Mano Leon's theme song, and on the indie scene, not so much on the Ring of Honor scene. But, there you go. She did, she also, her gear was inspired by Maria Brink. Later on, but... So you think in this moment it had nothing to do with wrestling? Uh-huh, think again. And hell, they've been on uh, my EFED theme songs. Some, well... Pretty much, Daddy's Fallen Angels, my theme song... When I was, um, doing the XWF. For a while, then I kind of changed back and forth between Counterfeit God by Black Label Society, and back to... Uh, Daddy's Fallen Angel, and then when I was uh, pretty much tag teaming as the Purebred Killers, we'd use uh, Unsainted by Slipknot. Well, the great song, by the way. And then when, in, um, when I was part of the Dynasty, we didn't use In This Moment per se, but I used it when I came out, when I wrestled. But still, I, w I wish the whole group would have used something like Comanche or something like that. I did use Comanche once for. Um, I think it was, uh, was it C-O-H or C C W F. I think it was, no, C-W-S, the other, uh, the, the spinoff of C-O-H. Which is still around, by the way, Call of Honor is still around. Not on YouTube, I don't think it's on YouTube anymore, it's on, um, I don't even know where it is. But, you know, Call of Honor with, uh, Travis Sparks, Monoxide, you know, those guys from way back in the day. You know, Hill Steven Company. I still talk to Hill Steven once in a while, not all the time, but. Big, big shout out to him, by the way. And big shout out to Travis and Monoxide of COH. Alright, come back? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. <laughs> I got too much time on my hands to go back to an EFED. Or a, you know, YouTube slash EFED. You know, like one of the, you know, one of those. Like COH or CWS. CWS is pretty much extinct right now. From another guy I know. I think we all know who that is, but... Will I ever go back to eventing? Probably, pro probably not. At this time, probably at this rate, you know, I doubt it. You know, I barely talk to any of my friends from XWF. You know, like Chris, uh, like a soldier. I don't talk to him that much. I don't even talk to Maddie, John Madison. I don't talk to him that much anymore. I, don't even, I barely even go on Discord. I have Discord, but I don't use it much. And the only time I use it is just to talk to Conquer Divide. <laughs> Which is sad. Not sad, but I mean, talk to those hot ladies pretty much on, not on a daily basis, but every time, every chance I get, I know, I, I like, like, hey, let's go on Discord, see what's going on with Conquer Divide lately. Sometimes they do live shows on, they have uh, live chats on, um, on Discord. I don't go, I don't go in it, but I listen in, I like chime in here and there, but. Most of the time, I, I barely even want to use Discord. I used to use it back in the day, but I don't use it anymore. It's like Skype. Who uses Skype anymore? Skype's been pretty much disintegrated, and now it's Zoom. And who uses Zoom? Unless you are, you know, working, of course. Because Zoom is basically for working purpose, working office meetings. That's it. That's all it's used for. I've only used Zoom a couple of times to do uh, some uh, doctor's appointments and some uh, some interviews here and there for work, and that's it. That's all I use. I don't use Zoom a lot, but when I have to use it, I use it. So, but for video for video purposes, I don't use Zoom. I don't even use Streamyard. I don't even I don't go live anymore. I don't feel like going live that much. I want to, but. You know, I just feel like I don't, I don't want to. Not because of super trolls, you know, bombarding me and, you know, interrupting me with bullshit. I mean, it's just, you know, just like one, two, three people that just think that, oh, you can Peter, when Peter goes back to doing live shows, you're going to do the same shit. You can do all that, and you can keep doing that. I don't give a shit. It's annoying to not only my show and and the live viewers that watch my epic live shows but it's, it's annoying and it's you're just wasting your time doing that bullshit but will I return live 
maybe, maybe not. I don't know. In the future, I, 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 do, I, I will say this. In the future, yes, I will return to doing live shows. But right now, no. I'm fine the way I am. But in the future, yes, maybe, maybe later this year, maybe next year, next year or two. But I will be be returning to live shows. Pretty soon. Will it be from here or somewhere else? That remains to be seen. But but stay tuned because live shows will be coming back in, in the near distant future. Maybe not this year. Maybe not next year. Maybe three, four years from now. Who knows? But I will be coming back to uh, talk to my great fans. Because I know people have been like begging me to do live shows. But I'm like, you know. I'm not, com I don't, you know, I don't want to get interrupted when I, if, especially if I have a, if I do it, if I'm doing like an interview or something, you know, I don't want to get interrupted by stupidity and stupid garbage trolls coming in my chat or whatever. That's why I have, you know, subscriber only mode on, but sometimes you gotta, even if you have mods, you know, sometimes that doesn't work, but. So that's what I'm saying. StreamYard is is, is is a piece of shit. I hate StreamYard as it is. That's why I don't use it. I use YouTube Live when I do live shows. But. But other than that. I, don't, uh, I just like use YouTube Live. And then, you know. I can usually do it, you know. Get, sometimes I can get the trolls out of here quickly. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, takes a while, but and still things might still happen regardless. But what's well, pretty much been about a, a little over almost almost a year since I act. Yeah, probably I think in June of this year will be one year since I've done an actual live show. But I never say never to. Me doing a live show. Maybe in the summer, maybe I'll do some live shows in the park, or if I'm in if I'm in, if I'm in New York City or wherever I am, maybe I'll do a live show. Just a, just a, not a not a long last fuck live show. Like if I'm at the park, I'm probably gonna do like a quick a quickie live show. Like maybe 15, 30 minutes max, but. You know, if I go on vacation, maybe I'll do a, uh, a live show just from, I was like, hey, guess who I am, you know. I'll do it from Vegas or something like that. Or Disney World. My Oh, Miami, who knows. I'm like, I'm in Miami, bitch, I'm live. You know? I know we would have to run the risk of, I still run the risk of trolls, but I don't have to do that. They won't be doing bullshit while I'm in on vacation. So... Because you won't know the actual location, so. can do your bullshit, so. <laughs> but, still. In time, uh, we'll, go, we'll be going back to doing some live, actual live reviews from the show. I don't have to do it off the phone. Which I'm okay with, because I have this phone I have, I'm using, I use mainly right now. Is my old, old phone. But 64 gig, I, if I can go as for as long as I can, and my iPhone that I have, that I, I've been having for a few the, few months, also is 64, 64 gig, so if this goes, I have a backup, when eventually that goes, then I'm, then I'm kind of in trouble, I might have to, I might have to go on, on, um, StreamYard and go live, which I, you know, if I have to do it, I have to do it, and if things, things happen, things happen, what am I, what are you gonna do? That's why you run the risk of going live sometimes, because you have things that just go wrong. The internet could go out and just dumb bullshit because of people that are that act like complete dumbasses and just want to ruin your show. Just can't have have peace and quiet when you, people do with live shows. But it is what it is. All right, move on. All right, so Thunder Rosa taking on Queen Amanada. 
Uh, wasn't a great match, per se. Uh, but, I mean, near the end, it kind of got very interesting, and Queen Amanada almost won. But, we start off with a feeling out process. I like to be in that ring for that. <coughs> feeling out process. I'm referring to the movies. Anyway. Uh, Queen Amanada grabs a basic arm bar and then starts shaking her hips to play some mind games. You shake, you can shake your hips and your ass all you want, but that ain't gonna work with me. I'll just be like, I'll be mesmerized. I'm like, stop doing that. I'm like, unless it's EO or Kyrie and Asuka, I'm like, shake it, baby. Shake it all night, baby. But just don't do it in the ring. Do it on my dick. On a nightly basis. I mean, come on now. Anyway. So, they run the ropes until Queen Amanada drops down. Which allows Thunder Rosa to, to grab an inside cradle for a near fall. Queen Amanada hits a backbreaker for a near fall. Uh-oh. When you hit, when you see backbreaker and Thunder Rosa, you get a little bit worried. Because she's coming up. Back surgery. This is, I think, her third actual match. So I think it's the uh, her. Uh, I think it's her second, first or second. No, I think it's her second actual singles match. Overall, I think it's her third or fourth. Cause she had a tag match with Abaddon. So there you go. Uh, so backbreaker for a near fall. Then Queen Amanada drives some knees into the rib cage. Ow. But Thunder Rosa is, is okay and sends her to the outside a drop kick through the ropes as we go to break. We come back, as always. The, the heels come back during the break. Queen Amanada kicks her in the back again. And then Thunder Rosa's like, Oh my god, my back! And not in a good way. But Thunder Rosa comes back, strikes away in the corner, sets up some running knees to face. Then a running drop kick against the ropes. Ow. So this a Northern Light suplex for a near fall. But then Queen Amanada came back with a wicked air raid crash. And I don't know how Thunder Rosa kicked out, but she kicked out that tool. Uh. So Queen Amanada was like, what? And everybody was like, what? Commentary was like, like she had her. Oh, no. So we get that, and then they get back up, and they start kicking the crap out of each other, like, you know, throwing kicks at each other. Thunder Rosa wins that exchange, grabs the, the, the Tahana Bomb, of all moves, the Tahana Bomb? Somebody's been watching Raquel Rodriguez tapes. Uh, but anyway, she hits that, one, two, three, she hits the pin in under nine and a half minutes. It was a pretty decent match, so I gave it two and a half out of five stars. And there you go. We move on. All right, then we have Lexi Nair in the back with Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. They're ready to face off against Brian Danielson and Claudio. Eddie doesn't give two fucks, and just Ortiz is just talking. He's like, he's like, we might have issues, but we're brothers. We're brothers. We're singing and we're happy and we're colored. Give me a high five. Well, in my, in my case, I'll give myself a high five. Self high five! Bang! DDP. DDP! Too cool. One of, my, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. DDP. And no, I haven't met him yet, but I'd like to. I have his autograph. I can't find it, though. But I do have his autograph. I have DDP Yoga. Signed by DDP. I don't have the, the thing with me because it's in the closet. I'm not going in the closet right now. That didn't come out right, but okay, whatever. But in any case, yeah, I got his. I got his autograph. I got twice. I got his autograph. I have a mug, which you've seen various times. I got a. I got a coffee mug from DDP. Not signed, but it's just a mug. With DDP's picture on it. And I got a mug with DDP's and butthead. But you've seen that too. And also I got Osito. And oh, 
everybody! C'est aujourd'hui sur le Aïe, 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 aïe! Hello, muchachos et muchachas, señoritas et señores. I am El Tolito Ese. Peter Joseph is my friend. He's my amigo. He's a good man. Leave him alone, you stupid crows. I will hit you with a flying jalapeno. Aïe, aïe, aïe! Alright, get out of here. Latino heat. Mr. Gilmore, what are you doing that, Ese? Oh, I'm just being nice to you, Eddie. Oh, okay, I see. Well, you have a great show, Ese. Thank you, Eddie. Good night. Oh, good night, Ese. Eddie Guerrero's my good friend. He's not a pendejo like Rey Mysterio is. But I respect Rey Mysterio. He's just not Dominic's dad. Imagine I meet Rey Mysterio, and then Dom's next to him, I'm like, Hey, wait, are you not... It's like, are you going to say hello to my dad? He's not your puppy! I'm his puppy, S.A. Pero! Eddie Galero! I like to be Dom and, and with uh, Mommy Rhea Ripley. I just say, Dom, you do know Eddie is your dad, right? That's your poppy, not Ray. I know. I'm like, yes, you're not old. I came from your loins, I say. My loins gave you birth, I say. You know. And then I'll just say, hi, mommy. Don't hurt me. She probably would crush me. I'm not talking about with her pussy. <laughs> I mean, I have to deal with Oscar, Eo, and Kyrie's pussy on a nightly basis, along with the missus. But <laughs> you know, it's only so much I can give. And Buddy Murphy might kick my ass. I mean, it is what it is. Hey, I met Taya Valkyrie. I asked her about John, Mister Morrison. He's doing good. You know, I, I was respectful. It's like, hey, you know. How's John? Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. 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 Oh, wait. oh, good. Good. You know, I, I said if my I said if my girlfriend was here, she would love you, cause she's you know Mexican heritage. It's like hello, where I long guy? You know, she would probably be talking to Rosa in Spanish. I'm like what? English? Well, I have to go Soniono on her. No, not even Soniono. I mean Mean Gene. English, you idiot! Even, even Miranda Alizé, that hottie. She's, she's Spanish. Rosa could talk in Spanish to her all day. It is what it is. Funny story, actually. I took Rosa to Ring of Honor once. Besides meaning Nana. She met Jay Briscoe. And, uh, you know, I introduced her to Jay and Mark. And Jay's, you know, it's like, this is my, my wife, Rosa. It's like, and Jay's like, hello, Miss Rosa. And, and then Rosa's just talking up a storm, like, stop. Like, let the man live, please. And then she met her favorite person in the whole wide world. That's Todd Sinclair. The one that the referee doesn't ref, the referee no more. Whatever happened to Todd Sinclair? Can somebody tell me what the fuck happened to Todd Sinclair? Did he just, like, retire? When Ring of Honor was, was you know, ended in, end, sorry, ended back at their last show in 2021 before, uh, a certain guy named Tony Khan bought it. That's the last time we saw Todd Sinclair. All we got is freaking Bobby Cruz is still in there. Because Bobby Cruz. Bobby Cruz! Carrie's still kind of like, kind of the ambassador. I mean, he, he does show up at Ring of Honor shows because he's the ambassador. He's just, just going to stay home.
can't have that. But Rose's two favorite people in the whole world that were in Ring of Honor are gone. That's Todd Sinclair and Truth Martini. She still talks to Truth Martini on Facebook, which is crazy. But, not like that. But, she met Todd Sinclair at, after a Field of Honor 2 at, 2 at, no, I think it was 2 at 3. I don't remember which one. That story is crazy enough. We're leaving and we're going down to Nathan's. Because it was in Coney Island. We're going, we're going home. We pass by Nathan's. And, and guess who's in Nathan's? We're going out, you know. We see Todd Sinclair, Chumpa the Psycho Killer, and Michael Elgin. You know, the guy that got blackballed from wrestling. Pretty much. When we see them, they're online with, I think it was, Kate Lethal was there too. Like, machismo. You know? So, we're online and people like, you know, getting pictures pictures and bothering them. Like, let them get their food and leave me alone. So, I I was like, you know, it's like, I mean, we're passing by and we I saw Todd Sinclair. It's like, it's like, babe, Todd Sinclair, go up to ask him for, ask him for a picture. I'll take it. Real quick, come on. So, she acts nicely to Todd Sinclair. Todd took the picture with her. She framed it. <laughs> like, framed it. Like, I would frame a picture of Oscar, Kyrie, and E on my lap. But we got that. Uh, and then, at a Ring of Honor show, I don't know which one, was in the Hammerstein, uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom. We met, she met Treat Martini. She's like, I love your hair. I'm like, dude, let him go. Stop it. But yeah, she, she like she did the whole you know thing. She's she smiling from ear to ear. I'm getting freaking jealous. I'm like, stop. But she has that picture somewhere. But, yeah. But yeah, we've met a couple of um, luchadors at the Ring of Honor show, and um, I'm trying to understand what the guy is saying, because he's talking in broken English. And Rosa, uh, uh, you know, he's he's talking, you know, I'm saying, I, I, I was trying to talk a little bit of Spanish to him, the one of the guys, it wasn't like Osito or anything like that, because I could talk in English, because he's from Coney Island, so... And I can talk to him in perfect English. And his parents are, his parents are damn good people to me. But he's out with an injury right now. But in any case, you know, I don't remember who it was, but I was talking to him. I said, you know, uh, you know Buenos Dias. I said, you know, he starts talking to me in Spanish. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> I'm like, I have to get, it's like, excuse me, can you, um, it's like, uh, what did he say? And Ro and Rosa, you know, knowing so much sp more Spanish than I do, had to basically translate. So then I had a talk. I talked in English, telling him what I wanted to say, and then Rosa was talk, talk translating for me in Spanish. And basically, the whole conversation is that the guy and Rosa. I'm like, what about me? What about me? What about Raven? Well, fuck you. I'm like, oh, really? It's always good to have somebody that's bilingual. In more ways than one. The power of the tongue. And I have a good power of the tongue. Mm -mm -mm. Your mama and your girlfriend knows about that, right? But I digress. But anyway, we move on. Alright, no, no stories. Alright, uh... Alright, so... Eddie, you know, doesn't give a fuck. Ortiz is like, oh, I'll just do the promo by myself. Okay, we get that. We move on. That's another guy I met, Claudio. I met Claudio... Um, and Chris Hero when they were the Kings of Wrestling. Back at a, uh, a Ring of Honor house show as well. The day they lost the belts, they were at 364, and they lost, I think, the um, uh, 
They, they lost the American Wolves, Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. Hated that day. That was a bad day. And I met, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? No, no, Sarah Del Rey. I met her too. Sarah, uh, Sarah the Model, what's her real name? But Sarah Del Rey. I even met Delirious. I didn't understand. I understood everything he said. Princess Peach is a bitch. Like, like, well, exactly. I, I understand how you feel. But how the fuck did you get Mandy Rose? Not Mandy Rose. So Mandy Leon. I don't know how Mandy Leon got with Delirious. I don't even want to know. I can only imagine how their sex life is. Just don't ring the bell. <laughs> They get all, you know, the, she'll get all naked, and then the next thing you know, the doorbell rings. Blah, 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 blah. He's going crazy. And then he power slams her in bed. I'm not talking with his dick, but, you know. But, I mean, more power to them, and um, congratulations to them on their marriage. Should have been me. No, because, you know, Mandy Leon's from Brooklyn. She's from, from my neck of the woods, not... Exactly my neck of the woods, but she, she's from Brooklyn. Hottie. Doesn't wrestle that much. I don't even think she wrestles at all. I think she just does modeling now. We miss her in Ring of Honor. We do. It is what it is. Alright, move on. Yeah, that's it. Alright. And by the way, uh, speaking of Brian Danson, uh, Rosa loves, I mean, adores, besides adoring Paige, Soraya Knight, and I met her mom too. Paige's mom, I don't care if she's around my age, but I still fuck her. I fuck her and her daughter. Paige and her, and her, and her mom. I have a nice tag team. Probably lose, but I, whatever. But, yeah. But, yeah, Rosa loves freaking Brie Bella. The botch machine. <laughs> it's like, oh, you do like a wrestler that botches a lot. More than not, like, oh, Jax. Just saying. Alright, enough about my stories about meeting great wrestlers. And you haven't. But I digress. Alright. Alright, so after that, which I gave that Eddie, uh, the, uh, Eddie and Ortiz promo, I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then we go to the ring, and it's time for the bu bu Bullet Club to sweep me for the love of God. Guns up. It's time for the Bang Bang Niner Gang. I mean, no, the Bang Bang Gang. Stop! I was about to. I was about to really yell at Jay White and the and the ass boys calling themselves the Bang Bang Gang. Was only had to put his Niner in there. You'd be like, what? No, the Bang Bang Gang, the ass boys, Colton and Austin Gunn, along with the Switchblade. Play with the Switchblade. The Ring of Honor Six Man Tag Team Champions, as they won from the Mogul MC on. I believe it was on Ramp. Um, when did they win that those belts on Rampage, I think, right? Yeah, they went on Rampage. Uh, so they come out. And they got it. Woo! They got a great ovation from the crowd. So they get on the mic. And Colton gets the mic. He goes, finally! I think he said, finally! The Gun Club! What, is, what did he say? No. No. Finally! Finally! The Bang Bang Gang have come back to St. Louis. He's trying to do the rock. And Jay was like, um, <laughs> can't do that here. And then Jay White gets on the mic, talks about being glad to be back on Saturday nights. But there's something missing. And then we get a cardboard cutout of Juice Robinson because he's been out with a shoulder injury. So, instead of the cardboard cutout of Jay White, now we have Juice Robinson. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. So, they talk about their success as champions. 
stuff like that. We're gonna, gonna run amok like at last the ass boys and the, and the Switch play do. A bullet club is up, and if you're not down with them, we got two words for you. No, not suck it. Guns up. So we get that, and then we get the music of the acclaimed minus the rap. What? Maxcaster, uh, can I have a word with you, sir? No, excuse me, no rap. So, Maxcaster, Anthony Bowens, and Daddy Ass, Billy Gunn, and don't forget, ladies, Sesame, Mommy Ass. So they come out to interrupt, and then again offer to form this super group, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, to the Bang Bang Gang, Bang Bang Gang. So I think it was Anthony Bowen says the people want to see. No, it was Daddy Ass. He's like, he's like, the fans want to see us form this mega group, and us having basically all the trios gold. So, what do you say? It's like, let's, let, come on, let's do it, come on. Like, Paul Stanley would say, right, Paul? Let's do it, okay. So, so after a lot of prodding and wishing and praying and hoping, Jay White's like, all right, let's do it. So, so, the, so, uh. Jay White's like, can I get a bang bang scissor gang chant? And the fans do it, obviously. So we have the bang bang scissor gang. Six. We have six great men, soon to be seven when Juice Robinson comes back eventually. So they have this mega fucking trios group. Not even a trio, that's a six man, six way. So, we have the Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions and the AEW trios champions all together in this big, humongous group called the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. So, I mean, thanks to Daddy Ass and really Anthony Bowens, the cl uh, the, the Ass Boys and the and uh, the Sweet Blade, the, the Gun Club, or the Bang Bang Gang, are now in. There you go, this big faction... And everybody's happy, and we're all scissoring each other. Not in that way, but, you know. Alright, so we get all that. So, I give that 3.25 out of 5 stars. And we'll see what happens with them. Uh, speaking of the acclaimed, they're going to be defending the Trios Championships against the former Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions, the Mogul Embassy. And that is Mr. Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony, Bishop Juan... Aldo Laquan and Toa Leona with Mr. Prince Nano, the real Prince of the Prophecy and the Purge, my good friend of the Embassy. We got that. And we got a big, freaking, huge dynamite. Woo! Pentagon versus Adam Page. Oh! That's gonna be epic. Um, we're gonna hear from Darby and Sting, obviously. Uh, I'm going to get to in a minute, Tony Storm and Diana Perrazzo meeting face-to-face -face for the, well, meeting face-to-face. -face. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Trent is in action, I forget who's fight facing, I don't have... Um... Let me get my other phone, I'm sorry, I'm not wasting time. It's late, I don't give a shit. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't care, I got time. I'm not even eat. I can't even eat, so... It sucks. I'm hungry as fuck right now. And I had my dinner... Way. I had my dinner like around 8, 9 o'clock, so... Alright, let me go to my other phone. And I'm gonna go look up the card for, um, Dynamite. Uh, it's gonna be the, uh... 24th, right? Okay, let's see. Alright, so, uh, yeah, we got Adam Copeland and Minoru Suzuki. Uh, that's gonna be an epic match. 
Uh, we're going to hear from Darby and Sting. Uh, we've got Diana Perrazzo. Uh, let me just try here. Okay, hold on. Alright, so... Alright, so we got Sting and Darby. We're going we're gonna to hear from them. We've got Diana Perrazzo and... And Timeless Tony Storm in a face-to-face. Uh, face -face. Uh, we've got the, tri uh, the AEW Trios Championship with... Uh, the Acclaim taking on the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage. Uh, Pentagon facing uh, the Hangman, Adam Page. Uh, Jeff Hardy taking on Swerve. But we all know who's going to win that. Uh, so yeah, Nana's going to dance for us on Wednesday night. So we all must dance when he comes out. Uh, also got Bordlow taking on Trent Beretta. Uh, Sting and Darby, like I said. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? No, we got five set, five matches. Like I said, Tony Storm, Deanna Prazo face-to-face. And inside from Sting and Darby, that's it. Alright, so that's that's Dynamite this week. So it should be, should be a great show. Uh, tomorrow on Raw, we got Seth freaking Rollins opening the show where we vacate the title. Because I, I been hearing rumors and seeing rumors online that WWE is basically trying to force Seth Rollins to vacate the belt. I don't think he's going to vacate it. He's not going to vacate it. You know, he's probably going to come out and say, Oh, the higher ups have told me to vacate the belt because of injury. He's like, I'm not going to do it. And then Poppy Priest comes out. And then he tries to cash in. And then I think uh, Drew McIntyre might stop him because they have a match. So, I don't know what's going to happen with, with we going to the World Heavyweight title and Seth Rollins. I think Seth's probably going to come out and say, I'm going to work through it. I'm going to take some time off. I will be back at WrestleMania. And then again, hey, maybe Hunter comes out and says, You know, Seth, uh, your knee is not so good. Uh, I can't have you going to WrestleMania. I need you to drop the title. Uh. And Seth's like, No. Will you get him back to payback? Uh. Or oh, not a champion, sir. Uh, money in the bank. Uh. Huh, that'd be interesting. How about Seth Rollins go getting into Money in the Bank and winning Money in the Bank? He's done it before. WrestleMania 31, anyone? Let's see. We could see something like that, but I don't think it's going to happen. But And Poppy Priest still has that Money in the Bank BK, so... when He's, he's going to cash in eventually. I don't know if he's going to win the belt. I'd like him to. But he's probably going to be like a transitional champ. So if he does cash in on Monday, he's probably gonna lose it to Punk, most likely. I don't I don't know how it's gonna work. I really don't know what WWE even has tomorrow night, but gonna be an interesting show to watch and see what happens in the first fifteen minutes of the show. When Seth Rollins comes out and you know addresses his his uh, status for mania. You know, if he vacates the belt or not. So we got that. Alright, we move on. Uh, Alright, so after uh, the, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang get for, uh, are formed, we go to the back, we, well, we go to a video from Timeless Tony Storm. Uh, she admits that she knows Diana Perrazzo from their time in Japan and threatens to, to, to beat her, greet, or greet her, beat her, and eat her. Nasty. And then she says, Now, where is my pork dinner? I guess you like the beef. <laughs> well, you've been getting the, getting that pork, if you know what I mean, from Juice Robinson. But anyway, so she leaves with Mar the hot, vivacious Mariah May and Luther. But before she goes, chin up, tits out, and watch for the shoe. I love her, man. I love Tony Storm. 
He is really taking his gimmick to another level. It's just so good. That's it. Alright, that's why I get that two and a half out of five stars. There we go, back to the ring for some action. There's a little less talk and a lot more action right here on my show. Alright, so we have Buddy Matthews, who comes out with Malachi Black and Brody King. The House of Black, they come out and they take on the Dancing Fool, <clears throat> Daniel Garcia, who comes out with FTR, uh, Dash, uh, no, sorry, Dax the Axe Hardwood and Cash Clock Wheeler, so they come out, and then Daddy Magic, Matt Maynard on commentary, and do you want to know, do you really want to know what makes Daddy Magic's nipples hard? Ask him yourself on his YouTube channel and his podcast. But in any case, uh, I'm going to abbreviate this because I want to go to bed pretty soon. Because I got I got a long day. But they go back and forth. Uh, pretty damn good match, too. Uh, Garcia wraps the knee around the ring post. Grabs the heartbreaker. Whatever that is. Makes it even worse. Uh, then he locks in the Dragon Slayer. Uh, but Buddy gra grabs the head, so it's bashing his head into the mat. Ow! Then, added to add even more damage, he hits a knee to face into a jackhammer for a near fall. The fans are going nuts. Uh, and then Garcia kicks out, and then the, he's getting beat up, and he starts dancing, you know, dancing from his knees. So, Buddy's like, well, fuck you, man. Grabs a power bomb, which gets reversed into a jackknife roll-up. One, two, three. Daniel Garcia gets the win. Matt Reynolds going crazy on commentary. The fans going nuts. Uh, almost an 11 and a half minute match. Match was great. Three and a half out of five stars. After the match, it gets chaotic. Uh, everybody fighting. Amongst each other, all six men are beating the crap out of each other, and then the entire locker room comes out, basically like half the jobbers and some mid-carters, they come out to try to break it up, some security comes out, I mean, like everybody and their mother, and the fans didn't even come, come in the ring, but that, that was crazy, the fans are going, getting, we're red hot, they want to see these guys beat the fuck out of each other, and they will, Next Saturday, or this, I'm sorry, this Saturday night, but not in any ordinary six-man tag team match. Oh, no, 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 no. As we go to break and come back, we see FTR and Daniel Garcia in the back, and Dax the Axe Hardwood challenges the House of Black to a six-man elimination trios steel cage match, brother. That's something you don't see every day, an elimination cage match. What is this, the War Games? War Games! Oh, Regal. How you doing, Regal? <laughs> Regal! Where we get that? So that's going to be a big-time match next week. Six-man elimination cage match. And there's going to be some blood in that match. You know it's going to happen. You know. Alright, so I did that, that after... After a promo, three out of five stars. And we move on. All right, then we go to um, our next match. We have Matt Seidel. Namaste. Take it on. Roddy! I know it's late. I'm sorry. Roddy! Of the Undisputed Kingdom. Uh, as he comes out with the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. I'm Matt Taven. And if you don't like Matt Taven, you, my friend. Well, you're not my friend, but you're a Melvin. And he comes out with his, his tag team partner, the man who punches people in the dick, and gives him a power driver, and that's Mike Canellas Bennett. So they come out, and commentary uh, gives them the Generation Next reference. Really now? Uh, the match was, wasn't great. Eight minutes, and uh, kind of went back and forth, but in the end, Ready! Wins with the end of heartache. 
because he is the ma Messiah, the backbreaker. So he wins with that pretty easily. Eight minute match, and the match gave 2.5 out of five stars. So he's uh, in continues his winning ways, and um, you know, Orange Cassidy wants to fight him for the international title now. But Ryan's like, no, we're gonna wait till Revolution when I take the belt from you. And he will. He will because he'll have the international title. Uh, Bennett and Taven will have the Ring of Honor title. And probably by the summer, Adam Cole, baby, if he comes back by then, he gets clear to come back. Or Wardlow will be Joe, probably by double or nothing. He'll win it, give it right to Adam Cole, who didn't have to even fight to get the belt. But when eventually, he'll probably be clear by, by between April and June. If all goes well. Which is rehab. Well, right now, you know, he's pretty much home on Twitch. You gotta love the guy, man. Chugs. But we get that. And we move on with that. Alright, so like I said, 2.5 out of 5 stars for that. We move on. Alright, after that... Uh, we go to your main event of Collision Tag Team Match. Claudio and Brian Danielson taking on Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. Match was pretty good. Big old, good old slobber knocker. Uh, Danielson's like mocking Eddie. You know, taking a sweet time to start the match. And Eddie's like... something! So then, um, Ortiz comes in, and he gets beat, he gets beat up for a while, then eventually gets the hot tag to Eddie Kingston, and we have another epic showdown with him and Claudio. Chop fest galore, kicks galore, eventually Eddie takes him into the corner for the pissing Honda. Chops of doom. And then Claudio hits a big time clothesline, uh, Brian Danielson comes in as the top rope headbutt circa Benoit for the fall. Claudio sends Ortiz into the barricade. Ow. Go back in the ring. Eddie hits a quick DDT on Brian Danielson. And then tags in Ortiz. And then uh, Eddie hits a T-bone suplex on Claudio. And then he hits, uh, then he hits Claudio with a suicide dive. And then Brian Danson manages to lock in the, the bell lock on Ortiz, who gets the ropes, but not that it mattered, because uh, Danson then stomps away at poor Ortiz, basically knocking him the fuck out, as Claudio is like grabbing Eddie, not letting him go, and then Danson backs up, hits up with Psycho Knee, or Knee Plus, whatever you want to call it. One, two, three, the Blackpool Cook Club get the win in 16 minutes. Match was okay. Three out of five stars. And that's it. Uh, so after the match, Claudio and Brian are celebrating. Uh, Eddie, Eddie uh, goes over to his buddy Ortiz and you know consoles him and everything. Ortiz apologizes to Eddie. Uh, you know, as the show's about to end. And then Danielson starts yelling at at Eddie, you know, calling him a bum and everything. And he's like, I'm going to take those titles off you. And then he spits in his face. Oh. And, you know, Brian Danielson has come out, like, legit says, I don't like Eddie Kingston. I don't like, the, I don't like his look. I don't like this and that about him. I mean, legit, he. And he spits in his face. So you know Eddie is coming out for blood the next time he sees Brian Danielson. So that match looks like it's going to be leading up to um, leading up to Revolution for the Triple Crown. I think Danielson will get that because you know he's going to be retiring pretty soon. So why not give him the Triple Crown and then he loses it? I don't know when. Maybe maybe at Supercard. Of honor in April. I don't know when that actually is, but it's, I think it's gonna. I think they said it's gonna be on um 
WrestleMania weekend, so I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them to do it April 5th, which is the night of SmackDown. SmackDown and the Hall of Fame. Damn, that's gonna be a lot. You got live SmackDown from Philadelphia. Then the Hall of Fame, right after that, and then going head to head with the Hall with the Hall of Fame, and pretty much going head to head with near the end of um of Supercard. Damn, that's a lot of videos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, not the Hall. I'm not going to review the Hall of Fame, obviously, but... I will review SmackDown and Rampage that night. Uh, and then, uh, probably on Saturday, April 6th, I will do uh, WrestleMania Night 1 and 2 predictions. Um, uh, early. I'm going to do it early. Uh... I know, because it's a certain anniversary of me and you-know-who. But I'm going to try to get that video done uh, early before I actually go out. Uh, and then, uh, hopefully I can get back from if we go out that day, but we'll see. Uh, and then I'm going to try to do Supercard Honor review. And then watch WrestleMania. And then I will do the WrestleMania Night 1 review on Sunday, which is Night 2. And then I'll do night two, hopefully the same night, but I know it's going to end like 12 to 1 o'clock, so I don't know, maybe I can do, maybe I'll do WrestleMania night two uh, on Monday, which is the Raw after WrestleMania, and then kind of go back to normal, hopefully, but we'll see by that time, I don't know, but depends on how my schedule goes between uh, between now and then, but right now we're, we're pretty much the same for now, but it could change in February or I say by Easter, it may there may be a change, but between now and then, we'll see. We're, it's pretty much status quo, but that's that. But in any case, I'm gonna get out of here, going on for two hours, and talk about lots of stuff <laughs> that I shouldn't be really talking about, but it is what it is. But anyway, so that ends collision in a really shocking way, but but it is what it is, and that's. That's it. So, Collision was pretty damn good, and I gave it a solid, solid 7.5. I, I gave it a 7 on on um, Twitter. I'm going to change... Um, I can't change it, but... For this video, I'm going to up it from my original post on Twitter from 7. I'm going to put 7.5 out of 10 stars for Collision. It was very good. And we'll see what happens uh, this, this uh, Saturday night on... The next episode of Collision. We got that. Alright, so we got Raw tomorrow night. Gonna be a big show. Uh, hopefully, I can review it tomorrow. Depending on how I feel. Because, you know, I'll be incommunicado. Pretty much, you know, with the colonoscopy on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And I'll be crapping my brains out all night. Probably during Raw. And maybe after Raw. But, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, if I, if I can... I'll do the review. If not, I'll definitely do it uh, probably late Tuesday because uh, I'll be out in the morning. I'll be I pretty much, I'll be, you know, disoriented. I don't want to come home and do a video disoriented. I'm like, oh, let's go, guys. Let's do an NXT review. I feel like I'm drunk. I'm like legit drunk. But, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so if I don't do it tomorrow, I will definitely do it sometime uh, probably Tuesday night when I get um, home from hanging out with my, my uh, family and uh, that stuff. So, do that. And then, um, so the, the videos this week might be a day off. But I'll get them done eventually. Uh, as far as Ring of Honor goes, I wanted to do the review. Uh, maybe maybe I'll do Ring of Honor tomorrow. Because uh, I have some free time in between. Because I'm not... Obviously, I'm not going out, so I'm off tomorrow because I got to prep for the for the uh, colonoscopy, and I'm off part. Of, um, well, actually, I have a half day tomorrow, uh, so I get I get out at uh, I start at, at uh, eleven and I get out at two, so a couple hours I'm basically in and out. That's what she said. Uh, so I'll be done with that. So that after that, probably about two thirty, three o'clock, I'll do the uh, quick wing of honor review. And then I got a I got my uh. I got, my, my, I got a, a point. I got a phone interview. Phone interview. I got a. My therapist is gonna. I got a, 
appointment with my therapist on the phone, because I'm not going to the office tomorrow, because i got to prep. So I'm going to do all that. Uh, so in between, I'll do my Ring of Honor review, and then do my other shit, get ready for Monday, get ready to do my co prep, my colonoscopy stuff, preparation, shit my brains out while watching Monday Night Raw, and hopefully tomorrow night, right here on the channel, your Monday Night Raw review. And we'll talk about it, but we'll see what happens with with all that. So stay tuned to the channel. Please hit that bell so when it does, that raw review does go up, you know when it goes up, and that's uh, pretty much it. Alright, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great rest of your night. If you're on the West Coast, good night. If you're on the East Coast, if you're still up, God bless you. But if not, good night on the East Coast and uh, in the Midwest and wherever else you may be. But Peter Joseph signing off. Peace out. Rock on and rock hard with your cuckoot. And if you're not down with that, it's just too fucking bad. You obsessed fucking wanna be tough guys because you're not. But all you wannabes and all you naysayers and haters and all that shit. If you're not down with the purge, you're not down with the prophecy, the greatest bunch of people in the history of the sport. But bottom line is, if you're not down with all that. I'm sorry, but we all got three words for you because we're better than you and you know it. So, just remember the greatest three words in the history of life itself. Fuck you, man. That's it. You don't like it? Don't watch. That's it. Until next time. And there will be a next time, my friends. As always, there will be a next time. Until I say there won't be a next time, but there will be a next time. And until then... Adios. Peace.